No, no, as I, as I made the Dogecoin song, the value was two cents. <laughs> And then it's like increased. Now it's more, it's like 20, 30 cents. I don't know, I didn't check, to be honest. But I think it's like went back to like a few cents, to be honest. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, now everything is going down. Yeah. It's not the right time to sell anything. No, Just now it's like buying. a bear market. Like the, <laughs> I think yeah, last week was like the lowest NFT prices since two years so it's like since they hit the like the start of yeah the i mean 2021 was like a big nft year it was a super high super expensive basically now last week it was like lowest since like two years like, oh fucking hell. this is the times where fortune is being made yeah maybe i don't know unless it's gonna crush completely and it's gonna be one huge scam yeah i don't i don't think so i mean Me so many neither. people are, are involved so many people like building cool platforms and like cool products i don't know i mean people thought the same thing about internet yeah. in the 90s you know people also about airplanes internet is a scam <laughs> look at us now without internet we cannot do anything in the world yeah uh i find it so funny are there some subjects you want to focus on i don't know my music yeah berlin community i'm also running like a music producers meetup Hmm. Like a community of music producers. I don't know. All right. So let's start. Yes. The podcast. <laughs> We're here with Mimi. Mimi, you are such a cool person. Oh, thank you. Yes. And <laughs> you told me even more cooler stuff right now. So a little bit of introduction. Mimi wrote a song about Dogecoin, for those who know. And Elon Musk shared your song. Yeah. The legendary 
Elon Musk. <laughs> the, the ultimate meme father, <laughs> Elon Musk. <laughs> yeah, this is really cool. And this is how you got into the crypto world. Yeah, basically. Via music. And also this is how we met. We met in an event. In, a, uh, in an event. Yeah. And it was organized by Nikita, who mm-hmm. is a crazy savage p- person. Yeah, he's, I'm a big fan. He's crazy, man, in a good way. Love you, Nikita. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and there he just approached us. And we had this crazy generative uh, kind of art that Nikita made. Mm-hmm. And I took some photos and we tried to make those photos as kind of generative art. Uh, and then you showed up. And I think I did not send you the photos. Still. No, I didn't. I didn't no. see them yet. No, I will send you actually after the podcast. I'm curious. To finish with that <laughs> once and for all. <laughs> yeah, thank you for coming here. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> this is really cool. And we start to talk already yeah. about uh, like when we met in this event mm-hmm. about your community that you're building mm-hmm. in crypto and about uh, also afterwards I realized you have as well kind of a producer's meetup here in Berlin mm-hmm. that you also facilitate and taking part of it. Mm-hmm. And you're very active in general in the music scene in Berlin. Yeah, I'm trying to. Yeah. How did you, are you born in Berlin, basically, or did you come from a different spot in Germany? Uh, no, I was born in Ukraine. In but, Ukraine, uh, really? Yeah. Wow, well, you have German accent. Oh, yeah, but I've been here like almost 10 years, nine years All now. All right. Good but job But uh, I used to live in Munich, actually. So I finished my school there, like the abitur, you know, like the final exams and started to study there. But then 2019, I moved here to Berlin. So, yeah, much better place for me i guess than munich (laughs) yeah there is nothing much to do there in munich yeah i mean i had like a cozy student kind of life and i had like a small cover band where i was like singing around in like weddings and birthdays but yeah there's like no space for singer songwriters and like this kind of scene it's huge here in berlin yeah for sure i mean only here is possible for a no-name person to have like concerts and people come and listen to your songs and really get interested in what you're doing. Like all of the indie musicians in here have like so much potential. I mean, I don't think it's possible everywhere, anywhere like in Europe, to be honest. Yeah, where else have you been in Europe? (sighs) I mean, I've only been living here, but (laughs) Um, I don't think it's possible. Like I think in Paris, it's also like a big music scene, but it's more like bougie stuff and... What is bougie stuff? I don't know. I feel like everyone is so luxury and they don't have like this much underground scene like in Berlin, you know? I see. It's more if you're into the scene, then you're part of it. If not, then it's not so easy just to come as a nobody. Yeah, you have to be like on the label, you know, you have to be like this and that. Or like, I mean, what I I think about like Rome also is like also big street musician city from I've heard from my friends from Rome, but it's overcrowded with musicians. Like the... Uh, the there is like sp- fights for spots and everything so but I don't know if they also have but I think they also have like some festivals for indie musicians and stuff but I don't know anyway Berlin is the best place to be I guess yeah it's one of the best cities in Europe yeah I don't know if the UK is still considered part of Europe yeah but I've heard like in London they also have like a lot of upcoming musicians but still it's like not on that level as in berlin i guess the level here is insane yeah there are some street artists uh, that are just mind-blowing yeah for sure and for yeah. me i'm coming from jerusalem so when you are a street artist in jerusalem mm-hmm. or in israel it's mm-hmm. it's like you you're begging for money this is oh, the wow. mindset yeah Crazy. Because if you're a good musician, you don't play in the street. You go and you play concerts. Yeah. So if you play in the street, it means you reach a kind of a low state. Hmm. And in here, it's the opposite. You yeah. see the most professional people playing in the streets. It's mind blowing. Yeah, it's the place to be. You know, on the streets, it's where people like get discovered and get booked for some other festivals and events. And so yeah, I think people admire music in here, like street musicians. Yeah. At least, I hope. I mean, there is odd knocks. I'm always crashing it, but... <laughs> yeah, they're motherfuckers. <laughs> they crashed once with me. Really? Yeah. Uh, no, it was not odd knocks. It was the police. Where? In Alexanderplatz. Oh, wow. Yeah, maybe really? I was too loud, but they told me... But Alexanderplatz you... is normally like a safe spot, but police is Usually. nicer. Yeah, they're really nice. They told me, you cannot be here. If you want to be here, you need to pay for the spot. You need to pay for being um, uh, amplified. And I need to pay to 
get money. Okay. So I need to pay all those three licenses in order for me to play there. And then that was the last time I actually played in the street. Crazy. But I've heard like, I mean, from all the times playing in Alexanderplatz, I never had problems with police. I mean, I had problems with like crazy people. And actually the police was like, was like even uh, protecting me once from one crazy guy that was attacking me. Attacking you? <laughs> wow. A so, street resident. Yeah. It's all like right. one good experience with the police that I made on Alexanderplatz. Wow, crazy. Why was he attacking you? I don't know. He was actually, I was singing in English and he was talking to me in like bad German that I have to sing in German and I have to like, <laughs> I have to exit the country if I don't sing in German. And I was like, you also not German. He obviously doesn't speak like native German. So I was like, okay. But he was, I don't know what was going on. He started like um splashing water on my amplifier on me like going around i don't know yeah oh, this is crazy it's scary crazy. when it happens yeah because you don't know what they yeah they i was do. like panicking i was thinking he was about to hate me or something so but then there was like police i was singing under the welt you mm-hmm. know so then the police came and then they kind of took him away or something i don't know <laughs> sometimes they're they're nice and harmless yeah but they're so unexpectable it's crazy yeah, it's like a good policeman, bad policeman. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I played it once and I played some like motorhead stuff and all those heavy <laughs> rock and they love it. Oh. They absolutely love it. Yeah. I mean, I only always have bad experience with the Odd Noxum because they're like always such, in such bad mood. They never like... Would will... you be in a good mood if you would work there? I don't know. I, mean, <laughs> I think not. Me for sure not. <laughs> yeah, I even... I mean, I have a friend who's policeman, like a my friend's brother and he told me even police doesn't like Ornok Sound. Hmm. So Do they have much authority, the Ornok Sound? Kinda. I mean they have like they are kind of belong to police, I guess, in the sense that they like split their uh to do's, you know, so they're responsible for this and police is like responsible for that. Hmm. So police will never just like come roaming around. Police only comes when they call you, like the the neighbor called on you that you like too loud then police is coming but audience can just uh, show up walking around i see so they're like patrolling making sure yeah. there is order yeah. no one is playing in the streets no one is having too much fun in germany no, no joy in here <laughs> this is funny yeah and did you move by yourself from ukraine um yeah pretty much i mean i was 18 years old and i was before i was studying in kiev and uh, then the revolution in Kiev started, so I dropped out. I was studying, I was studying opera singing, and I dropped out because of the revolution. Like my academy got shut down for a few months, and then my parents were like, "Okay, you should move to Germany." And I was like, "Okay, yes." Hmm. So it sounds so easy. Yeah, I mean, it was very spontaneous decision. I don't know. I was like crazy, eighteen year old, just exploring the world. So yeah, that's why I moved to Munich. Basically, my parents just like picked up the city and yeah like my my studies in from ukraine didn't count so i had to do like the last year of school basically here to do the final exam so yeah pretty much cool my experience and where are you now with your music journey what what are your plans we played already four beautiful songs yeah which one will be the first one i do not know we will decide it afterwards and then there are three other songs that people will listen in the end of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how did you come to this music? Um, I don't know. To be honest, I was always like a bit writing songs since like teenage times. But I never had like a courage to really show them to the world. And then as I studied opera singing, I feel I was mobbed so much by my teachers. They're like, oh, you have to be straight standing always. I don't know. You're like trained to be a puppet almost on stage you know everything is so mechanic and I really didn't feel much connection to opera singing even though I was doing like my whole life I was like in music school which was also um concentrated on like academy academic opera singing basically um so yeah I feel like it was just a protest against my studies so like after I dropped out and I, as I moved to Germany, I started just like writing songs with my ukulele and like slowly, slowly, I think I've built up the courage to share them. And 
yeah, that's how I landed here. <laughs> yeah, and you also come with good style. Oh, thank you. The clothes that you're wearing, everything that you share on social oh, media. Thank you so much. <laughs> I really, really love this. Thank it's you. It's a kind of a mixture with manga, <laughs> like uh, this Asian okay. character, but yeah. there is something very... Uh, like marshmallowy. Oh, interesting! It's, it's the colors that you choose. I think I never thought about it. Yeah, I just love bright colors. I don't know. I'm trying, like, to wear some boring clothes, but I ended up wearing some weird clothes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waking up every morning. Like, okay, today I will not be wearing weird clothes. And then, this is your everyday clothing, or you have some? Yeah. This is not as extreme as you can, for no, example, for the it's party. it's very calm. It's yeah, okay. But I have so my SpongeBob socks. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's very important to have your SpongeBob socks. <laughs> and you're wearing pink, which is a great color. Yeah. I love pink. Yeah, I love pink too. I used to love purple. I think last year was like my purple year. I was obsessed with purple. I had a purple ukulele. I bought like all of my stage <laughs> outfits were purple. And this year is my pink year. Yeah. And I did it before Barbie movie. Before the Barbie movie. Yeah, I did it first. So, so everyone no connection who, to that one. <laughs> if you see Barbie, you know where it came first. <laughs> Barbie also really pro Bitcoin in the movie. I did not watch it, really? but I heard, uh, yeah, like they can, for example, they yeah? got some Bitcoins or he talks about it in the movie. I don't, I don't remember that. I watched it, but I don't, I don't remember that. I did not what watch is? it. I, I've seen an interview <laughs> with Michael Saylor. You know this dude? No. Michael Saylor? No. Uh, he's a CEO of a company. It's called MicroStrategy. Okay. And I think they're the biggest company who buys Bitcoin. Okay, interesting. It just keeps on stacking Bitcoins. Oh, every crazy. Every time it goes a bit lower, you just buy another wow. million dollar worth of Bitcoin. The biggest believer. <laughs> yes. And this is also very crazy. He says that the Bitcoin standard, it's good for everyone. Hmm. If your family will be on Bitcoin standard... If your business will be on Bitcoin standard, yeah. it will thrive and it will sustain the yeah. time test, you know, because, uh, yeah, yeah, I think you're really much into finance as well, if you're into crypto. Yeah. And I think yeah. we can go really deep into this subject. Yeah, so, let's dive deep. <laughs> yeah. Those who are listening and they don't feel like listening to it, you can stop, but you can also <laughs> make yourself a big favor and maybe pay attention for this. Yeah. Maybe learn something new. Yeah. Because I feel like it's also important. I mean... I'm really a big advocate for musicians even to dive into like music NFT world kind of, because why not? What is NFT for those who don't don't ever heard about it? Or maybe they heard about it, but they heard that someone had a, like a simple picture of a monkey on a yacht yeah. and then he bought it for $10 million and now it's worth maybe $20. This is what main media... Yeah, that's like the stereotypical knowledge, yeah. I guess. But what is NFT? I mean, in easy words, it's like a digital collectible. Because before we were also like used to collect art, like, I don't know, some crazy collectors were having like exhibitions and reselling them. So it's basically the same, but in a digital world. And you could do anything to NFT, basically. It could be music, it could be art piece. It could be, yeah, any piece of art that you are... Uh, guaranteed owner of and you can prove that you own it you know so like no one can steal it so and what is the difference let's say if i have nft of a song of mine versus having the mp3 on the pc i mean yeah I'm, mp3 doesn't really have the licensing and credits i guess and most of them are non-unique you know so before i guess you can also, like music NFT, you can compare it to CDs or like vinyl, you know. So you have it in your hand, you can really like touch it. You can really prove that you you have like bill that you bought it and everything. So I don't know. For me, it's more about like collectible part and the proof that you like. I mean, for fans, I guess, of some artists, it's really like a proof of oh, I I belong to this community. I'm buying this person's NFTs and I support them. As like people used to collect vin vinyl or CDs before, you know. So, I mean, right now we have uh, over pollution, I guess, through all of the streaming platforms, yeah, which is crazy. Music. Yeah, but it, yeah. it's so crazy. Used to, we used to listen to the whole albums, basically. But right now we listen to some random playlist that Spotify is uh, algorithmically creates for you. And I don't know, you have like so much trash. I mean, I don't want to like call any music trash, but it's like not for you. You know what I mean? 
I feel it's so much important to pick, like really handpick music that you listen to yeah. and what you put in your mind. And not just like, I don't know, not thinking of what you listen to and just having some background noise, basically, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The whole music industry is very noisy. Yeah. There is so many songs that are being released every day. I don't know the exact number, but it's something exaggerated. Like, I yeah. don't know, a thousand songs a day is being released. Yeah, it's crazy. Maybe even more. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of cool because, I mean, through internet, we have this tool that we don't yeah. need the crazy record label to um, to notice us, you know. We can be our own boss, basically, and put out so much music as we want. We don't have to rely on them, but still this like filter options kind of fall off through the label yeah. falling out, you know? So it's like everything is there. It's also very cheap to make music today. Yeah, true. You don't need a huge studio. And today, relatively, the microphones today are relatively cheap with yeah. the quality, uh, with the price and the quality yeah. they can provide is incredible. Yeah, it's amazing. And also we have plugins today that can basically clean every yeah. mess that we can imagine. And there are also like now this AI plugins, you know? Yeah. So basically, Did you, you know, use them? I never used them, but like from like the music producers meetup, people like told me that they really do the good job. And basically as a producer, you don't have to do much anymore. You know, just like peep, peep, and it's all mm. clean. What, what kind of tools are they using? I don't know. For EQing and yeah. compressors. Yeah, for example, either like the background noise or like extracting the voice from the track, you yeah. know, to for remixes, it's also useful. So yeah, I don't know. I think there is like a plugin for anything right now. Yes, not yet with the creation, but I think uh, there is a lot of AI tools that helps yeah. mixing faster. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. And this is what I like about AI that. People are very scared about it, right? They mm. think, oh, AI is going to take my job. AI yeah. is going to create art instead of me. Yeah. But this is not the case. AI, yeah, I, I think, think it's more like uh, it's either doing stuff that we do it again and again and again and again so they can yeah. do it themselves. Yeah. Or they can spark a little bit of creativity. Yeah, for sure. And then it can be uh, processed into something that is very original. Yeah. Yeah, I also think, I mean, I, I really enjoy like all of these AI tools, especially like the... Open AI, you know, with the yeah. Dale and like Mid Journey and everything. I feel like, I mean, on one hand, I feel bad because it's kind of like AI is learning from all of the art that is there online, I guess. And they're mm. like basically stealing from all of the unknown artists and they never give credit. I mean, it's not that they like copy it one on one, but they kind of learn it from them and then recreate in this kind of style. So it's also. I feel like this can, it could be like problematic with like the credit, you know, but on the other hand, it's like so useful to be just creative, you know, you don't have to pay so much. I, I mean, as an independent musician, for example, you can create the cover art and you don't have to pay like, I don't know, yeah. 500 euro for a designer to make uh, art for you. So yeah, exactly. yeah, it can be useful, but I think like there should be like more regulations, at least like in the, in the art uh, tools for, for AI. Yeah. But what is the difference if Mid Journey is doing it in 30 seconds yeah. or if you spend five years of your life trying to copy one specific artist because you want to have the style of them? <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, that's crazy. If you like want to copy somebody's art, I mean, it's also stealing kind of. I do it a lot with music. Really? I do it a lot with mixing. I was obsessed with the low end of Dr. Dre. Okay. His productions, everything he touched, yeah. there is such a juicy and beefy low end. Okay. And I was obsessed with that. <laughs> I really wanted all my mixes to have this beefiness in the low end. Okay. Uh, some artists, I, I, I really take stuff that I like from their songs. Okay. It can yeah, be... but it's, I think it's okay. We all listen to music. We all are influenced yeah. by other artists, you know? So even like by with songwriting, you always, you constantly listen to some stuff and you kind of steal the melody from some song. You kind of steal the wording. I mean, I don't think you can... I, I don't think we should call it stealing because it's just inspiration, you know? It's inspiration. Sometimes it's to pay tribute to those yeah. artists. So yeah, I true. bring something from them because people yeah. know that. Yeah, and for sure. That's my way to pay tribute. That's cool. Yeah, but I I thought about it because I've seen uh, some, some robots fighting one day. You know those cage robots? <laughs> yeah. So I've seen this and... 
the robots are learning as well what's going on wow. they do it really really slow and uh, like all this conversation reminds me that I thought back then basically our brains yeah. is a kind of a circuit mm-hmm. and the more we do something the stronger the connection between two points is mm-hmm. and this mm-hmm. is how we develop our personality our habits and all those stuff yeah and also robots is the same because if they do something and they have a connection between this action and this result it happens way slower and I think there are not many options that the, this energy can go to like in our brains for example yeah and then you know AI it's the same concept I think but yeah. it's just really really fast yeah I mean it's also learned I think the same principle as robot learning something you know oh my god it's so mind-blowing I mean sometimes <laughs> when you like think through that it's a bit creepy but I think as long as it's in a under our control it's fine do you think it's our under our control for now yes yeah I mean for now we can like kind of guide it to the direction we wanted to to go you know but yeah once it's like starts to learn how to create another AI there is already really things yeah oh my I, God. I forgot what it's called but you can create agents from chat GPT yeah so you gave one task yeah to the AI bot whatever yeah. it is and then it creates more bots and each oh, of wow. them is doing a task and Okay, that's crazy. And then it comes back to you and it happens in seconds. It's mind-blowing. Yes, it's really <laughs> the beginning. You know, I, I'm, I'm really into this world and I always keep on thinking where it's going to lead us. Yeah. And for me, it feels like the world is becoming more and more customized to the individual person who, who's seeing the world. I mean, yeah. of course, it was always like that. But I think uh, with social medias, this is the most perfect example for that. Yeah, for sure. You know, once I open your Facebook, it's completely different than when you will open mine. Yeah. And I will see what you want to see and you will see what I want to see. Yeah, true. And imagine this, that if we're going to use VR sets and we have AI that can create 3D worlds yeah. just in seconds. And, you know, this Neuralink stuff from Elon Musk mm. that you have a chip in your brain and you can use it as an interface with a PC. Oh, That's so crazy. Oh can God. you imagine when AI can actually, um, like, analyze your thoughts and your emotions? Wow. And if you think about an orange, it can appear to you in virtual reality. That's crazy. It's like a cyborg. It's, it's scary as fuck. <laughs> and then we can, we can share the same virtual reality, but we will have yeah. two different realities there. Yeah. It's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm open to welcome AI in my life, but to some extent, you know? <laughs> yeah, where is the limit? <laughs> yeah, where is the limit? It's, it's a good question. I don't know. This, this, is, this scares me, like, to be, like, half human, half robot, half AI. It's, uh, that scares me a bit, I would say. I think we already are a little bit half robots. Yeah. You know, we use cars or bus, so yeah, it's true. already we extension. We have so many tools. Yeah, or phone if we want to yeah. have extension to our voice. Yeah. And then all our knowledge basically is stored somewhere in Google. <laughs> true. Yeah. 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 Also, recently I saw some story of a friend and she's a nurse. And it was like a robot doing the surgery, like open surgery hmm. on a person. But it, for now, I think the doctor is like, Uh, guiding this uh, the hands of this robot but imagine like one day it's gonna be like just like all robots doing the surgeries on people wow. what, like what does it mean it will be cheaper to have health insurance probably <laughs> yeah I don't know if it's cheap right now um, for the right reasons you know now it's not so cheap in Germany I would no, say no it's really expensive and yeah. ba- I think we're paying basically the health insurance of the people who are retiring this is why it's so expensive yeah Yeah, I think it's like a pool kind of. So you're now paying for people who are retired. But once you're going to be retired, people are who are payers, who are like working, are paying for you. Hopefully. So it's like a cycle, you know. But I think in Germany, they're also scared that they're not going to be enough people as we're going to be old or like soon who are working because there are going to be like so many old people. Yeah, it's already a problem in Germany. I think it's already a problem, yeah. Yeah, that's why I think they, they want to bring a lot of immigrants to yeah. Germany because they work and then they pay taxes. Yeah, and usually yeah, it's sure, better sure. than a lot of countries in the world to work here. Yeah. Yeah, but this is not so interesting. Let's talk no. about your community with music. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about this. Yeah, sure. Um, 
So, I mean, I have these meetups, the music producers meetups. Um, I started it last year, just out of curiosity of how many people will show up. And I never, I never been to any meetups, but I've heard that it's like a cool place to meet people and to connect to your local community, I guess. And there was like no other music producers meetup, like chill one at that point in Berlin. So uh, I thought, okay, it's like a cool niche that I can take. And I was really into music production on my own and all of the songs uh, that I released before I all just produce at, at my home studio, you know, just like being a nerdy producer. And uh, I think I've, I've had, I've always missing this connection because a lot of my friends were like singer songwriters or like doing some other stuff, but I didn't have really like producer friends when I could like have like a nerdy producer talk. So I was like, okay, that's a good opportunity to meet more producers. Um, so yeah, and now it's like over a year and I have like a few co-organizers and we, we're doing like collaboration collaboration with other uh, communities in Berlin, like Culture Worker Studio. It's also like an art studio in Berlin or some um, music agencies and just like doing different fun events like we had a small festival a few weeks ago and then like workshops and just like casual meetups where people just talk and drink so yeah it was really fun I don't know for how long I'm gonna run it because as an organizer it's always so much work and you never end up really connecting to people I guess I mean everybody knows me there but I never like have like a deep connection to that many people because you're running around making yeah, sure everything I'm running is around. working. Or when we have like a workshop, I have to take all of the timing, the preparation, prepare the all of the sound and everything. And so, yeah, you kind of have to like welcome everyone and like talk slightly to everyone so they feel like safe and welcomed, you know. So, yeah, but I don't know. It's a bit, it's a bit exhausting. It's fun, but it's a bit ex- exhausting. So I don't know for how long I will have the energy to continue it because I really want to concentrate also on my um, EP and kind of put it out hopefully till 2024 amen (laughs) yeah let's see how it goes (laughs) are you doing it by yourself the the events the events um, sometimes it's it's just me sometimes it's some co-organizers who are just like from people from the community who are like happen to be active and interested in joining me as organizer basically um, for a long time it was Jason also like one producer um, but uh, now he kind of has some other things to do and now I'm almost like looking for other person to have like a co-organizer role who I can like rely on who is there like for every meetup and stuff so how often are the meetups? Every two weeks on Wednesday. So it's like twice a month. Mm, this is cool. Yeah. But maybe I will, I will switch to like once a month from September. So it's like, because in, in winter, it's also getting more um, hard to find a location because it's cold and you can, we were also doing like raves, for example, in somewhere. So it's like also easy option. You know, you just go to the park and you do a rave. Yes. But in winter, it's like harder to find a location. And we have always like 50 to 80 people attending meetups. In so, winter? No, no, no. Just every meetup basically. So I don't I don't know for now like the big enough space that can host us, you know. So I think maybe I will do it like once a month. So it's like I will have more time to prepare the location and everything. Yeah. I think it's also nicer when it's once a month. Yeah. There's kind of scarcity and... You, you can make it maybe a bit longer. Yeah. And then you can also chill in the middle. Yeah, yeah for sure. And people will wait yeah. for it. Yeah, let's see how it goes. I don't know. I mean, it's just like a, such a nice feeling to see how many people are collaborating in our community, how people just meet new friends. And I don't know, people come to me and say, oh, Mimi, thank you so much. I've met so many friends through this community. So I really feel like home with all of these people. People are super nice. And I'm very impressed because... I don't know, sometimes in Berlin there are so many weird people. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, somehow it happened to be like everybody's super cute and nice and supportive and people collaborate with each other and learn from each other and stuff. So, What is the biggest collaboration that came out from these uh, meetups? I don't know. I mean, people have organized uh, 
parties. I think it's was at uh, oh, I forgot the place, but it was really cool like to see like four of our members basically, and the fifth person was also like the member, and the, they all are like, DJs and producers, and they were having like a visual, audio visual event kind of the, like this, this one, and then other person was also Shakti. He's also like the member of our community. Shakti. Yeah. That's his name. Yeah. It's a funny name. Yeah. Shakta in Hebrew it means uh, to smoke. Oh, interesting. And usually when you say, let's, let's do a shakta, it's like, yeah. let's smoke something. You know? Oh my God. No, <laughs> maybe he's, let's he's smoke from a joint. India. I think it's Indian name. <laughs> shakti. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Languages. Uh, yeah, he, uh, we also like co-organized uh, a bigger festival kind of after CSD. It was like a CSD after party. So, yeah, but people also like collaborate on songs and music. So it's kind of nice. It's a big honor that. to... to to make something that connects people together. Yeah. And to see the fruit really of the work. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. And you're also making a Web3 kind of platform for yes. musicians as well. It's I not only like, for musicians. No, it's audio based. Uh, oh, what was it? Can you can you share about it, please? So our idea at OR, it's uh, to build a social media platform. It's called OR? Yeah. Like ear in German. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, yeah. And that's the logo. Cool. Like a year. And um, so, yeah, basically a social media platform like Instagram, but only for audio where you can share some, I don't know, some special moments or some sentimental moments or some snippets of songs to either your fans or your friends or I don't know. It's more about just detox of visual input in our lives because like TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, everything is so visual. Yeah. And also I've heard statistically that 50% of people listening or like wa- watching Instagram without sound. And I was shocked because like sound is such an important medium in our life and yeah. people miss out on so much. So I feel like it's also our goal is also to teach people how to detox, you know, and how to change their life a bit and be more thoughtful to, um, yeah consume more of a thoughtful content you know and i feel like sound is so powerful and can trigger so many memories so many feelings and we kind of neglect it to be honest i don't know even like right now it's a podcast you know so yeah we're here mostly yeah it's an amazing medium it's it has really so much power and so much potential but kind of like our world is like so visually concentrated right now yeah this is definitely the case I think it's the fact that we we use our phone yeah. a lot. Yeah, true. And most of the time when we are using our phones, it's not really appropriate. Either we are yeah. on, on a bus or in a public place or yeah. in our house. Yeah. And then to, to play it sounds very loud. It's kind of rude, right? I think this is why most of the people, they rather looking... But then it's also because of this kind of, um, I don't know, uh, crack in the wall. Mm -hmm. So everything is channeling there, all the effort of the people of the internet. Yeah. So then it becomes a standard to have good visuals so it can just pull us in. Mm. I started to see those crazy commercials, you know, those games commercials? Which one? Games, like uh, general apps for games. Yeah, okay. Uh, you know, like sometimes with those uh, bubbles that you need to have like three yellows and then it blows up uh-huh. okay. and it shows you like a game through. I don't know, maybe it's it's me because I keep on watching those videos. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but there is like uh, this video where you have uh, people um, who are coming to, to attack you and you're a soldier and then you need to go through uh, like certain path that you can multiply or you can... Uh, I don't know, uh, increase your people or decrease or divide yeah. and then you have more people to fight zombies, mm-hmm. all these kind of things. And uh, I forgot why we even started to talk about it. Um, oh, yeah, well, why it's <laughs> visual. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes I see ads for that mm-hmm. and the beginning of the ad is so not connected to the actual ad. So you can see someone working on wood, you know, with those things that's spinning. Usually yeah. it's also over all over the internet. Okay. And then you see three seconds and it goes back to the ad of the game. What the hell? Yeah, they just want to grab your attention for three seconds. Yeah. And this is like, we did V, we grab your attention for three oh seconds, and now you can watch our ad. It's like a t- TikTok strategy. Yeah, <laughs> everything is TikTok now. Crazy. It's really weird. 
yeah. this this noise and yeah, the, the fact sure. that everyone start to standardize standardize themselves mm-hmm. for TikTok and all those very short uh, attention grabbing yeah. concepts yeah I feel like I'm so over like this whole visual content for now I mean I really need a myself I really need a TikTok because I don't know as as a independent musician you always have to be on all of the platforms you know have to you have to create content to kind of put your name out there and keep up with everything and I don't know it's too much it's too much yeah and also to keep up with every platform ugh, I don't know I mean you can also just like create one piece of content and reshare it everywhere yeah like there are also YouTube shorts TikTok Twitter yeah, it's all the same. Instagram, so... This is exactly what I do when I publish something. Yeah. I have this uh, website, it's called Matricool. Okay. And I think it's uh, like 100 euro for the whole year. Mm-hmm. And you can have five accounts and you can post unlimitedly, oh, I nice. think. Yeah, and every time I post a reel, it goes YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Oh, wow, nice. Yeah, and you can schedule your whole month, basically, mm. even more than your whole month. If yeah. you if you sit down maybe for two, three days, you can schedule like two months even. Depends yeah. how complex the posts are. Yeah, it's amazing. But you have to be like very disciplined, you know? You think so? I think it just, it makes sense. You know, if I, if I do it for two days, then yeah. I don't need to worry about my whole social media for two months. True, true, true. And then my head is in a different space afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. I was trying to be really consistent for like years on Instagram and putting everything, but I always, uh, I wasn't that successful, you know, <laughs> always. Have you done the posting yourself? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's really tough. This is really, really, really But even really like tough. creation, I, I don't have like the inspiration to make like, for example, I was trying to do like the binge content creation because I used to do like ukulele tutorials a lot. Now I'm like over it a bit, but... I used to, I, yeah, I try to do like the binge creation where I do like, okay, I'm preparing five uh, songs and doing tutorials for them. Then I, on one, on one day, and then the next day I edit all of them. Hmm. And the next day I'm like scheduling all of them. But I don't know, I think I did it only for like two months in total. And then I was like, okay, I was just like burned out from like, I don't know, I need to be more chaotic and spontaneous i guess yeah to have fun in content creation because otherwise it's just me being like a robot with a ukulele and like okay let's play c chord let's play g chord you know so it's it's very yeah. repetitive like the tutorials also you know so yeah this is why i think ai tools are great yeah <laughs> I, I use it the whole time the whole fucking time oh my god yes. what is your favorite uh, there is this AI tool that I cut all the shorts for from the podcast. <gasps> nice. Yeah, I just put the audio there. Yeah. And the craziest part that is it's connected to the internet, so yeah. it knows what word's gonna be viral. No way. Yeah, it's like uh, it's called Opus. Okay. Opus dot pro. I don't know something like that. Okay. But they're great. I think they're one of the best. Interesting. Just to cut those uh, That's so shorts. That's so useful. Oh my God. It's amazing. It makes the caption, all uh-huh. the subtitles uh-huh. automatically. I can edit everything, of course, mm-hmm. there. And they're, they're getting better and better every time. Every month, they just give new updates. They keep on improving. That's so useful. Crazy. It's so amazing. I click once, I upload, I wait, then I click twice. Yeah. And then it just cuts all the videos. And my job is just to go over them. Yeah. Make sure there are no typos mm-hmm. and to make sure that it really makes sense. Because yeah. sometimes the AI takes a few sentences from different times uh-huh. and it tries to connect them, but yeah. it doesn't sound so good. So that's I just need so to nice. listen to that and yeah. that's it. I just upload everything. I, I scheduled it a month ahead. Crazy. Yeah. So cool. And this is the whole idea about uh, about everyone, I think, who is struggling and they have so much on their plate that they cannot really have even half of it. You know, if you have mm-hmm. money, then have yeah, the, the services story. of someone. Yeah. yeah, but if you don't have money, just go and have some AI tool that will yeah. help you with that. No, it's so good for like independent artists, independent musicians. It's a really life saver for sure. Yeah, I think no one can do stuff by themselves and yeah. be great at what they're doing. 
it's no, always true. about having a good team about someone or something else that's on yeah. the work no for sure all of the big like tiktoks or like youtube creators they all have a team you know yeah and we we all like sit on our phones and think oh my god they're like such a good editor and how come they can post a video every day yeah so yeah they have like a team and management and everything who's like doing it for them <sighs> yeah exactly really? it's like the pop artist you know uh, it's very similar britney spears yeah you know as a kid i thought this is her music this is what she believes in yeah but the truth is a lot of her music she did not even write i know it's even so blowing. most of it yeah hit me baby one more time was written by a guy Oh my god. By a dude in Sweden. <laughs> and he wrote this one. He wrote hit. Uh, Oops, I did it again. Oh, wow. Yeah, his name is Max Martin. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for all the producers, I think he's the, the GOAT. Okay. He's the GOAT, the greatest of all time. He, he made so much hits. I think he's the most number one hit producer in the world. Wow. Yeah, and the Swedish dude. And he was uh, with the Backstreet Boys. Okay. He's basically the reason why they are so good and famous. Mm -hmm. And he did also uh, with Katy Perry. He did with Taylor Swift and Sync, of course. Um, who else? Uh, Ariana Grande. He's all over the wow. place. Yeah. So massive. Yeah, I don't Max know what's going Martin. on also in Sweden. They're so big in music. Yeah. <laughs> like SoundCloud is from Sweden, Spotify. True. ABBA. Yeah, they're always so good in Eurovision. You yeah. Know, they're so musical. Also, the cardigans, you know the cardigans? Yeah. They're also Swedish. I oh, think. really? I didn't know. Yeah. I thought they were from US. I really like them. It's something in their school systems in yeah. Sweden. <laughs> they know how to write good pop music. <laughs> Amazing. That's so good. It's really crazy. So let's go back to, the, uh, to your platform that you're building, the yeah. audio platform. Mm -hmm. How does it work for me as a user when I want to use it? How, how can I enjoy the platform? So basically, it should be, it's not shipped yet. Mm -hmm. It's still developing. Yeah. But uh, the idea is that it should be an app where you can just open it up anytime you hear some nice sounds and you just press record. It's going to be like the big ear. It's a record button. You record it and then automatically you will, you, you can record as much seconds as you want, for example. It automatically is converting as an NFT and you can decide, you can like re-listen to it and you can decide if you want to mint it or not, if you want to like put it on blockchain or not and like save this memory forever basically. And then it's also should have like an uh, AI generated visual to it, but like super simple, you know, so like not to take the, um, the attention from the audio, mm. you know, but just like to have like a nice uh, greed in your profile and yeah you can do whatever you want with the sound you can share it with your friends you can share it on your profile you can resell it hmm. so yeah i mean there i feel like there is so much potential for this idea especially like for it also even for families you know when you have to you want to record the first laugh of your child or the first word and you put it on blockchain as a like an old photo album used to be you know so you can share it with all your family and your grandparents, everything. And for musician also, you can use some audio from this as samples and use them. And you buy this NFT, and you can use it as a sample in your songs. If I buy uh, an audio file as NFT, can I download it? And yes. Do whatever I want with that. Yes. And do I get WAV files when I buy the NFT? I don't know. How is it being stored? Which blockchain is it? I think it should be on Solana. We're like thinking about Solana, but yeah, we're also open like to maybe further do it on ETH or a Polygon also. So let's see. But for Solana now, it's going to be on the Solana. Yeah. Yes, there is a huge community of Solana. Ah, in Berlin. Berlin is Solana. It's so crazy. They have so many events, so many projects are also on Solana. Yes. Yeah, it's I just shared cool. with you the story how I got into the Solana team here yeah. in Germany. I just uh, basically did not want to work for someone who did not appreciate so much my effort. And then when I finished everything and I went outside, I seen a huge Bitcoin sign <laughs> on, a, on a store. And then I came in and I saw a lot of people sitting down and just programming. Yeah. And no one seemed to care about me so much. I just went in and everyone. Yeah. Person. People are used to people like coming in and, you know, it's like open space, I guess. Yeah. 
Yeah, and in the end, they show everything they, they did or mm -hmm. whatever they want to present. Yes. And if they have a good project, mm -hmm. so they can get funds for yeah, the yeah. project. And this is amazing. Yeah, that's kind of like the hackathon kind of event. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're going to be also hack a house from Solana from Thursday till Sunday. Yeah. And they're going to participate there also with OR. Hmm. When? What day? Uh, from this Thursday. On Thursday, you're going to be there. Yeah, yeah. Cool, me too. Are you going there too? Yeah, definitely. Oh, nice. I'm really up to support everything <laughs> that is connected to blockchain. So cool. Yeah, and uh, I think I think so Sunday should be like NFT day. Yeah. There should be like a lot of panels. And I'm super excited also about the, there should be like a gallery. And every day there should be new artists shown in like NFT exhibition there. That's going to be really, really cool. And the place, did you see the photos? No, but I heard it's a It looks like place. a bear kind of, a, so it's like a old factory or something. It's really, really cool. <laughs> Cape to Bergheim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious to see what, what they plan to do there. Yeah. They had a crazy event they made uh, like three weeks ago in Warsaw. Uh, ah, ah, yeah, in Urbanspre. Yes, that was beautiful. It was really nice. What was so amazing for me is to see how many people came there. Yeah. But I think this event was like open to like non-Web3 people too. Yeah. Because of all of the art. But it's really cool like to do the onboarding, you know, for people who like maybe a bit curious about blockchain exactly. or Web3, where they see, okay, they have like so many cool events. And after that, they can also like learn more useful stuff about it, you know. Just to get exposed to that. Yeah, yeah for and sure. Just to hear someone like asking, I was asking a lot of people, what is your connection to blockchain? Yeah. And some people just heard about it a little bit. Yeah. Some people are into NFTs. Some people are actually working there mm -hmm. with some kind of blockchain project. Yeah. And it's mind blowing. I, I first heard about Bitcoin in 2017 mm -hmm. and it could consider to be like a punk <laughs> coin or money that is not real. Yeah. I had no fucking clue when I got into that. I just knew about it. I had to pay for something in Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you later. And then I, I thought, all right, if I'm going to buy it and use it, I, I'd rather have some s research about it so I can know what is it. Mm. And it just blew my mind. But I was still young and stupid. <laughs> so I was not really careful with that. Oh and I saw my Bitcoin, the, like the value of my money growing with that. Yeah. And I took out the money mm. um, because I had to pay some debt. But if I would not take the money... It will be a different story right now with me. Oh my god! Yeah, this is how crazy it gets with Bitcoin. You're like this uh, pizza guy. Yeah, <laughs> you know the story. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, you want to share so... it? Huh? You want to share the story of the pizza dude? I don't know exactly, but I feel I think like it was 2000. What, what, what year? Was... I think it was 2017, right? Yeah, somewhere there. Yeah. Yeah, and the guy went to some pizza restaurant, like pickup store, or whatever. Yeah. And they offered paying in Bitcoins. So he was like, oh, finally I have something to get use of my Bitcoins. And he sold like, he bought like four pizzas or something. Yeah. I don't know how much worse of money it was. Yeah. But it's really painfully amount of money to lose. <laughs> <laughs> it's considered to be the most expensive pizzas. Yeah. Now. And even like in Berlin, I think like all over the world, people like from blockchain, they celebrate uh bitcoin pizza day yeah yeah it's so funny. yeah this is true <laughs> this is so crazy how things are becoming memes slowly with yeah. time Probably yeah but I, have... I feel like also the, the culture of blockchain is like so memeified you know hmm. there are so many memes and i don't know i feel like people are super nice i mean in comparison to i guess like the general um it scene i feel like blockchain is like more fun but IT is something different than blockchain. Yeah, but I mean, it's like still the branch of IT, actually. The programming, you mean? Yeah. All this. Yeah, but I mean, I... blockchain is like kind of like the tool from the IT. I mean, programming is like the same, basically. If you like program for the normal internet or like for Web3. Yeah, it's the same it's programming. It's kind of the same languages and stuff, so. Yeah, just the application is so different. Yeah. Yeah, blockchain is something incredible. Yeah, it's really nice. I, I wish like, that's why I'm like, really advocate for like musicians to join Web3 because it's like so easy and they can be kind of the pioneers, I guess. Especially like right now, like in the bull market. Oh no, in the bear market. <laughs> uh, when like 
there is like no not so much like concurrence through other musicians you can really establish your name and yeah. there are like so many people who really want you to be there you know there are so many people who needs music in the three so it's really a good time and then when bull market will come it's going to be even more hype i guess so. yeah definitely uh, yeah I, i look at for the long run yeah. those who start now with crypto yeah they're gonna ride the whole wave and you know it's like like starting being on facebook when it just began yeah yeah definitely yeah. and if you had i don't know a group or a page back then and you managed to get so much traffic today yeah. you can make a lot of money out of it yeah yeah it's insane yeah and i think the early people who are joining right now and all the musicians who really want to do something with themselves who are not yet exploded mm. on the spotify wonder <laughs> algorithm I think this is one of the rare opportunities that occur once in 50 years. Yeah, definitely. There is something so powerful and so new. Sometimes I see it as the, the revolution of trust. Mm. I think there were a lot of revolutions, um, but there are really big ones. So the biggest revolution, I think, is when we discovered fire. Mm -hmm. And then we had the revolution of religion, which mm -hmm. was a great tool back then because mm -hmm. we were just monkeys. And then yeah. some religion gave us a little bit of order and some sense, you know. And then afterwards, we start to develop uh, like countries and governments. And it was a great tool as well after the religion. Mm. Uh, but for the same reason that religion did not serve us anymore, that's why we switched to governments. Um, or more to say to kingdoms, and then it switched mm. to governments. And I think this is getting a bit old now and... We need to switch to a different system. Yeah, for sure. Because the governments are not so reliable. Yeah. We all figured it out in, in COVID. Yeah. You cannot really trust the government that tells you it's illegal to be outside. It's chaotic. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking a lot about Bitcoin. Like lately, this is really something that blows my mind. I have... You know this book about uh, soft war? It's called Soft War. It's, no. It's about Bitcoin being... Uh, a weapon basically but okay. a soft weapon uh -huh. and i forgot the name of this guy he wrote this book and i think like three weeks ago the book became banned from everywhere so they put it out of the shelves really? yeah Why? because of what's inside of it but what what is so critical that he's saying he's saying that bitcoin is is a weapon and those who will have bitcoin right now yeah. they will be able to secure themselves yeah And there is like a huge, uh, I don't know how even to call it, like seven hours of, of this guy. I forgot his name. It's so embarrassing. Uh, he's talking <laughs> to a person named Robert Breedlove, okay. who is also very much advocate with Bitcoin and money. Mm -hmm. And they just talk seven hours about it. And they start with the concept that if we really go back to the evolution, so we were probably amoebas and then we need to fight over resources, right? So yeah. I'm amoeba and you're amoeba. Yeah. And who, who from us will survive? Mm. So either I will have a, a mutant that can maybe give me a harder shell. Yeah. And then I will have a bit more defense. So if you try to eat me, then it will be difficult for you. But then it will be easier for me to eat you. Mm -hmm. Right? So then it's kind of I, I took the resources. Mm -hmm. And it's like when a, a lion wants to eat. He does it without any permission. Yeah. When when you have a military that wants to invade the country for resources, they do it without permission. They just go and they invade. Yeah. Uh, if you want to protect your country, you need to have a lot of military, right? If you have a lot of resources in in the city, let's say, mm -hmm. you need to surround it by walls. Yeah. And and this is kind of the the war basically that going on every day. We don't notice because we're living really comfortable life, but it's everywhere like that even us as humans it might not be violent as it used to be but we have fight over resources right who gets the better job who get more money uh, who got more um, like reputation or respect you know we have our hmm. our stupid rules and bitcoin is doing this idea mm -hmm. it's permissionless i can send you a bitcoin as much as i want mm -hmm. i don't need to ask anyone you can receive it as long as there is internet And the more people are buying Bitcoin, the more miners are in the, mm -hmm. in the system, the more secure the system is. And what does it mean 
for those who don't know. It means that, let's say right now, Bitcoin, the whole market is worth, let's say, a billion dollars. So now if I want somehow to sabotage this, uh, the blockchain, the whole ledger of the transactions, I need at least to have one million, uh, one billion mm -hmm. and a bit more so I can have the majority. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. It's really, really impossible to do that. That's why it makes it the most secure system. And I imagine what if countries are now going to buy Bitcoin in order to secure their, their productivity, you know, because now it's also, I can go into what is money really, mm -hmm. uh, which money is for me, it's the, you kind of store your energy and your productive energy. Mm -hmm. So if you are producing stuff, you receive something in exchange, mm -hmm. and this is money. Or money is one of the ways it can be manifested. And the problem with money is that it doesn't keep the value so much today in this monetary system that we are in. Uh, for the most basic reason that those who are in charge of printing money can just print how much they want. Yeah. They just say, all right, we're going to increase the debt ceiling <laughs> and let's print another $10 billion into the system. Every time it happens, the money that we have is worth way less. Mm. And this is what Bitcoin is solving because there is a limit of 21 millions. Mm -hmm. And every four years, it's get harder and harder to mine those leftovers of Bitcoins. Mm. So from 2008 until now, it's like 11 years, we mined most of the Bitcoin. I think there are 20 million Bitcoin that got wow. mined. And the last million Bitcoins, it will take like 100 years to mine all of them. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, because every time it cuts in half. So the difficulty is getting exponentially stronger. Crazy. Yeah, it's genius. And then people think, but what if they will shut down the internet? <laughs> what if there will be no more, I don't know, Bitcoin? What if it's a scam? Yeah. But the money is a scam. Yeah, this true. paper money is a big scam. And if there is no internet, there is also no money. Yeah. Most of the money is not even existing. It's just numbers on a PC. Yeah, true. And Bitcoin is there. As long as you have internet, I really think that it's impossible to live without internet. Yeah. I mean, I'm not so much deep into Bitcoin, but I really appreciate Bitcoin as the money of the future, basically. I really believe like every every coin has its own, um, how do you call it, goal, you know? Yeah. So like Ethereum is more for like building stuff on top of it. And Bitcoin is kind of our gold of the future, like money of the future, yeah. you know? So yeah. yeah, it's really that like every coin has like its own role in kind of building the new model of her for society basically yeah this is definitely it. yeah <laughs> the model for society yeah well said <laughs> yeah but i love this word it, it's a bit crazy where we can go as humans yeah i think sure. we need to let go of our ego basically mm. in order to receive this new future yeah definitely yeah i'm thinking also you know we came from amoebas Mm -hmm. somewhere back in our evolution yeah. and if you look at amoebas and you would think this came up from this little thing yeah and maybe now this consciousness that started as amoebas and then developed to have this body maybe now this consciousness evolves into the cybernet hmm. and the cyberspace and it it takes a different shape and way bigger than we think wow yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people who are, like, fans of this theory, you know, that we're all going to be, like, cyborgs in, like, 100 years, and you can download your consciousness to the computer and, like, live <laughs> forever online, basically. It would be interesting. Yeah. Are you and scared no, of this? I'm, I don't know. I don't have much opinion about this. I don't know. Mm. I don't take it, like, that serious, to be honest. Or I don't take, like, myself that serious that I will think, oh, it's, like gonna be bad or good i mean if it's gonna happen it's gonna happen i think people will be more open to it like more to explore this kind of art of living i guess i don't know i mean i'm not like the passionate fan of it but i'm just want to like observe it and like see where it's gonna take us i know that uh 
Grimes, you know, the yeah, the singer girlfriend of Elon Musk or like ex girlfriend, she also like really a big fan of it and she's want to like put her conscious on blockchain and live forever. And yeah, stuff. she's really into that. Yeah, it's, it's how crazy. can you put your consciousness into that? But probably she knows stuff that we don't. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's like not ready yet, but like, yeah, maybe like with this chip, you know, of course, you can like it can like scan your memories or like some impulses. I don't know. Did you have a spiritual experience in your life that you kind of realized this infinite or maybe the source? It's really difficult to talk about it in, in words. Mm. Um, but some things that can, can trigger it can be psychedelics, mm -hmm. for example. It can be maybe uh, very intense sports mm. or maybe uh, very intense emotions that can come up. You know, I don't know. I I don't think so. Not that I can like think of one. You know, hmm. I feel like I'm not so, I'm not really a spiritual person or not really philosophical person. I mean, this is like the most philosophical conversation I had like in months, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just like to observe the reality as it is and kind of create some fun ideas out of what I have hmm. with the tools that I have. And just enjoying my life. I don't know. I'm not really thinking about like the far, far future, but I like to like play around with these ideas, you know. Mm. Yeah, the spirit is not about the far future. I would say it's more about uh, the the right now mm -hmm. and how deep can you go into the right now. Yeah. Because the right now is infinite and it's the only thing that is basically here. You know, when we think about the past, it's only sure. memories. And when we think about the future, it's uh, fantasies. It's the same as memories, I would say. Yeah, for sure. And right now, when we really focus, everything that we need is here. Yeah. And uh, for me, when I had some psychedelic experiences, it, it just gave me this sense of of everything. It's it's really difficult to put it into words, mm -hmm. but it shows you the the very source mm -hmm. of this energy that basically creates everything. And I'm curious mm -hmm. how, how it's how it's going to be with with crypto and AI and like if this consciousness can actually take over something bigger. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, could it potentially have a soul? I don't think so. Yeah, but then what is a soul? No one knows really. Yeah, it's crazy. What is a soul? <laughs> yeah, we don't know this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so what about your music? How would you describe your music if your music was a dish? My music would be uh, french fries with mayo <laughs> and ketchup. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I feel like my music is like very simple, silly, uplifting. I don't know, just like kind of a good mood music, you know. I mean, I have also some, some ballads, but they all kind of, yeah, just cute little thong, songs and I don't know. I think my songwriting also very, very simple, like straight to the point, you know, just like I'm just observing something and I'm just like writing it down. So, yeah, very fun, cute, I don't know, just like French fries. <laughs> French fries. With mayo and ketchup. <laughs> garlic mayo? No. No, you don't like garlic? No. I love garlic. <laughs> yeah, it can be intense. Uh, I feel like I liked it as I used to live in Ukraine. Like my child, I liked it. But in Germany, it's like too spicy. Or like too... Different, yeah, it different makes garlic. sense. Yeah, different, war, different parts of the world have different tastes to stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it reminds me I was in England the first time and I used the salt and it was not salty. Really? Yeah. Crazy. And like, where's the salt? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's yeah. interesting. And what what do you prepare with your music? You said you have an EP that you that you're working at the moment. Yeah. So that's I feel like this year was like my goal to release a new song and release a like a bigger EP or even an album because I feel like throughout like last three years I was so concentrated on like live performances. I was having like three four performances. A week and all of my weekends were full of either busking or some festivals and everything but I never 
really put my focus on like digital music basically you know i had mm. some nfts but it's still like kind of a different world from my spotify releases so yeah i was like performing and people were coming to my to me after the performance and asking hey where can we listen to your song or can we buy your cd and i had like nothing to give to people so i was like okay that's the point that i'm missing you know like the online presence with my songs i guess so yeah that's the motivation like kind of to keep up on that front and release hopefully an ep or even an album but it's uh, i'm struggling so much i don't know i kind of on one hand i would love to produce it on my own because i really believe like in my diy prod project but at the other hand i really love having like input from other people and like do collaboration with other people so i think it should be like the the right amount of i don't know everything like the input and the feeling about my music the producer or like the uh engineer should like feeling it you know so yeah let's see i mean i tried to like collaborate with a few friends and actually my la latest release i produced with my friend vika she's also an amazing musician so she helped me with the recording and producing it so yeah but, yeah, I think you don't have shortage of producers that you know. Yeah, no, but it should be like the vibe, you know, because mm -hmm. I also had like experience with other producers before, but I wasn't ready to like go for a compromise, you know, because it's always is it, if it's a collaboration, it's always a compromise between a producer and a song songwriter, you know. But I was compromise, like, you mean by taking down ideas that you have in order to give space to other person? Yeah, kind of like the final product, it should be like a compromise of both people, you know? All right. I feel like, but I wasn't like ready to let go of my, con over, over control, you know? I mean, you still have control, but still you have to like be open for other ideas and other inputs, you know? So I wasn't ready at that point, but where I wasn't like satisfied with the product that went out. I mean, I never released songs that I was producing with other people before, other than Vika, but the other songs i didn't really like kind of so yeah because of the work with the producers yeah it was it was not your your yeah. vision that you yeah. imagined but before also like years ago as i started like producing stuff and as i do, did like a first collaborations i myself also didn't know exactly what i want and i think that was also the problem you know because i was learning it in the process of collaboration and i was like i don't like this i don't like this and that's how i learned what i actually like after out of like sorting out the thing that i didn't like but then it wasn't like also a struggle to project my vision you know to people because if i only say what i don't like they obviously cannot see what i what i like because i didn't figure it out myself yes it's tricky with productions yeah i feel like it's super tricky like because all of my songs i mostly vision them acoustically like just with ukulele and some guitar maybe and some shakers and the voice but on the other hand i really would love to have like a proper like pop rock production on my songs but i don't have like the vision of these songs you know so it's i mean right now i have like more of a idea but like back then i was like really lost i couldn't like imagine the sound in my head you know so how did you decide that this song needs to be worked with a certain producer? I don't know. It was just random. Hmm. I don't know. I worked on one song. It was called We Are. And yeah, I never released it. And another song is called Liar. I also never released it. I don't know. Is it uh, just you that you don't like the songs and other people say it's amazing? Or so that other people notice maybe it's not no, the best work? No, I think it's just me. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it was just like not the vibe, you know, I was like, mm, it's not really what I feel like. Or it's not really the songs that I would listen to myself, for example. So, yeah, I don't know. But with, with Vika, it worked out really good. But unfortunately, she's like a musician herself and like really active artist. So she doesn't have time for working with me for the full EP or album or something. But yeah. What if you offer her royalties? No, but she's like really, really busy. She's having yeah. like, she's also preparing like I think the next album and stuff. So she's like 
working really every day on her own. She got like the funding from Incentive Musique. Cool. So she's really, yeah, she's really doing an amazing job. So she's there completely. Yeah. She's like in the studio every day, just like doing her own songs. You know, she's like really This is her name, her artist name, Vika? Vika is her real name, yeah. And her artist name too. Cool. Just V with the uh, Y, V Y K I. Vika. Yeah. Write it down. We can put a link to Vika. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's amazing. She, she can come on the podcast, maybe. Yeah, you should. You should have her. She's really inspiring. She's also from Ukraine. Ukrainian people are amazing. <laughs> but I love the whole. Maybe it's not the most. Uh, I don't know uh, how do you call it. Uh, oh, 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 I forgot it. But you know, a politically correct thing to say. Okay. But I love Russian culture. Everything that is connected with this language and this. It's huge, of course, yeah. The whole uh, USSR was okay. all over half of a uh, planet, I would say. But I love the language and I love the, I the food. And I mean, I can't relate, but good for you. You don't like the, the language? Uh, pff, Is I mean, it because it's Russian or because also in Ukraine they have kind no, of... No, uh, just after after the war, kind of. I mean, my, my native language used to be Russian, actually, but because yeah. I was from the South. But like after the war, I'm like... I'm completely allergic to all Russian things, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, had, but yeah. I had it with Arabic because in Israel, you know, yeah, it's the, either you are Jewish and you fight for your right to live there, right with the with the hands, I say. Yeah. Or you're Arab and you live there, Palestinian, mm-hmm. and you say, those motherfuckers took my house. So mm-hmm. there is a constant war. And as a kid, it's it's like a conditioning that I had with every time I heard Arabic, I, I taught myself that it's dangerous. Crazy. And here there are many Arab people in Berlin. Yeah. And every time I heard someone speaking Arabic, it just it triggered me. Wow. Yeah, I started to feel stress. Like I need to, to survive. Mm. It's very powerful. So what I did, I started to learn the language. Oh, wow. Yeah, just to, to have the control and the, this uh, the safety that I know maybe what other people are talking about. Yeah, wow. Because behind those sounds, there is a lot of information. Mm. If I don't know this information, I just have movies in my head about what it might be. Wow, that's impressive. Really good strategy. I'm just scared of it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, language is also crazy. Yeah. It's also what I like about music that it's international. We all know what's what's good we, we know what the major chord mm-hmm. feel like right we might not even know it's major but we yeah. know what it feels like yeah but it's also like a funny feeling to like listen to songs that you don't understand like language of hmm. it's kind of completely different experience than you like listen to your native language or english are you doing that sometimes i do i really enjoy it it's kind of like it does something different to my brain you know it's what languages like, I don't know, like, I don't know Spanish, for example, when I listen to mm. Spanish songs or, like, Brazilian songs. Hmm. Yeah. What, what it does to your head, I'm curious. I don't know. It's just, like, my, my brain is, like, tink, tinkling or something. Or tickling, how do you call it? It's just, like, a different vibration, kind of, you know? Because it's a new language. No, because it's in a different language that I, that I don't yeah. understand, you know? Some kind of, like, maybe, like, imagining what it could be you know just by the sound of it so i like build my own story in my head you know so this is a funny do you like, like to, a... to listen to podcasts as well in foreign languages no i've never done that <laughs> yeah. i did an interesting experiment yeah i love norwegian language as well oh, wow. all those scandinavian languages mm-hmm. uh, i studied a little bit by myself but i never really put the effort mm-hmm. but then i stumbled on uh, on a woman that have a YouTube channel that she teaches how to speak Norwegian. Mm-hmm. And one of her videos, it's her reading a book, kid's book, and she got her baby son basically asleep on mm-hmm. her. And it was very motherly energy, the mm-hmm. way she read it. I did not understand anything. Wow. But I thought because it sounded so nice, maybe I can listen to it before I go to sleep sometimes. Oh, wow. And slowly with time, I start to make sense of what it might be like. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's basically about some animals mm-hmm. that meet, and yeah. this is how kids learn to count. Yeah. 
So it starts with a cow, and this is number one, mm-hmm. and then there is a horse joining mm-hmm. in, and then they count until two, yeah. then other animals until you count until ten. <laughs> and it's so interesting. <laughs> I'm thinking about like a kid, you know, a kid doesn't know any languages. Yeah, they also learn just by, by listening and kind of figuring out at some point, I guess, what it means. Yeah. Like pinpointing, I think like, I think kids like learn a few words just like by parents or something pointing at stuff. And then they kind of like filling out this blank spaces later, just by logical connections, you know? Yeah, exactly. And just the like context of what is going on. Yes. It's so interesting. It's just yeah. like what we are talking right now. You know, if someone doesn't understand English, yeah, it's just some weird noises that we are making. Yeah, it's fascinating. But somehow we we agree that those noises have those meanings, hmm. and this way we are able to to exchange very complex information. That is really mind blowing. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's really mind blowing. Yeah. I also sometimes I was thinking about like how singing is just basically talking and how weird i mean sometimes i have this like out of body experience when i like see somebody on stage and they sing and kind of we all sit there and listen to it but it could be just like a random person talking you know but through the community and through the i don't know this whole feeling that we all agreed to sit here and listen to this person we kind of build this momentum, you know? Yeah. But basically just like a random person talking. Because singing is almost the same as talking, you know? Some nonsense and kind of everybody makes such an importance th- of this performance. Or I don't know. It's really interesting. I don't know. Yes. But it's kind of weird. Language is something different than music. Music is... Uh... It's a way to describe the universe. Yeah. Because it's relations, music. Major chord, I think it's a three to two. Or it's a minor. I, I don't really know how it goes with the numbers, but it's all relations. Yeah. And somehow everything works like that. Maybe not in a way that we can hear it, but in a way that we can see that. Hmm. If it's uh, trees, for example, uh, you have the golden ratio. Mm-hmm. And what looks good, basically, it what is look very close to this to this ratio, the golden ratio. Mm-hmm. Um, you know the golden ratio, right? Yeah. yeah. Is it Fibonacci? Yeah, exactly, the yeah. Fibonacci. And everything in the universe is like that. If you take a pineapple, for example, and you start to count uh, those uh, the cones of the pineapple, mm-hmm. so you have two spirals basically that you can count. You can count from left to right and from right to left. Mm-hmm. And the Fibonacci sequence is basically it starts with one, then it goes to two, then it goes to three, then it goes to five, then eight. So basically you add the previous number and it gives you the next the next mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. number in the chain. Yeah. So if you count it with any spiral, let's say pineapple, it's easy. So you have either five and eight or you will have eight and 13. It doesn't go like seven and 14. Wow. It doesn't go different ways. Everything that is spiral, sometimes with flowers, you can count it, but it's really a lot. Mm -hmm. It's just mind-blowing. Interesting. You never noticed this? No. It's really crazy. (laughs) Also, the hand, the way it's been folding, it's Fibonacci. Really? Yeah, when you make a fist. Yeah. So the way that you fold your fingers to your palm, it creates a Fibonacci ratio. But you know some people cannot fold a finger like this. Like, we have, like, three joints, basically, right? Yeah. And some people have, like, only two. People have only two? Yeah, and some people have four. Like What? Yeah, I saw some people have, like, four joints, basically. Like, I have three. You also have three, right? Yeah, I hope. <laughs> yeah, I have normal hands, I think. No, no, but, like, this part, you know, like, this part? Yeah. This part can move, and this part can move. So people, Some people have, like, four. So they have another joint? Yeah. Where? <laughs> In their nail? There, there, yeah. I don't know, just like extra. Wow. Yeah. I wonder what it feels like. <laughs> Must be creepy. Uh, so what yeah. are your plans for the future? How do you prepare to to make the album? What do you prepare with your music? What, what would be your dream, basically? I don't know. Achieve? I really want to apply for some funds also. 
So that would be the goal. I really wanted to do it in, in summer, but I decided to uh, concentrate on my project with, with blockchain. So I kind of missed out on that. But I really want to like take part in the next funding round and maybe get it. And then, yeah, slowly also collaborate with producers that I like and even like yeah get like a proper studio and stuff so yeah that's the goal I don't know how long it will take me to apply and if I will get it or not but let's see but if I if I will not get it I will just like start doing it like slowly independently on my own and hopefully finding like some collaborative producers that would love to join me on my journey so yeah let's hope for 2024 I always have, I mean, it's so funny. I have, since now I have like single, I'm releasing a single per year. So it was this year, if it's real, last year, turn on the lights. Two years ago, um, what was it? Never enough. And then three years ago, her. So it's like, it's so lame kind of, you know. <laughs> it's super slow, like releasing one song per year, really, really want to. I don't know, kind of put out all of my songs. Because I have like, I don't know, maybe like 40 songs that I want to record. I mean, not put them all in one album, but like kind of, you know, slowly getting them out there. Because I feel like as an artist, it's kind of a crime to not sharing your songs. Or like for musicians. If you like wrote them, then it was meant to be like shared with the world, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I think so. It doesn't matter the quality as long as you wrote it. I feel like, I mean, the quality, I feel like it's good like to navigate by your own feeling. Like your own gut will tell you when it's like time, when it's ready to be shared. You know, once you like go out and having concerts and you play these songs for the people, I think it's already a good enough product to record it and put it out forever on on the internet, basically. <laughs> On the blockchain. On the blockchain too, yeah. <laughs> I talked with a uh, with a guy named Alessandro. I released a podcast a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and he's having the label. It's called Mars Alliance. Basically, they their slogan is so cool. Oh my god, I know him. Yeah. Yeah, he. I think he mastered my song, my my latest song. Really? Yeah. They're really good at what they're yeah. doing. Yeah. The whole team that they got there in uh, Mars Alliance. Yeah, yeah, really incredible. And he told me that was it was shocking, but also understood that this is the the reality. If you don't release a song every forty days, that's what he said. Okay, you don't exist, basically. Oh, I don't exist. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> but it's crazy. crazy to keep up with a yeah. song every forty days. Yeah, every six weeks or what is it? Um, something like that. Yeah, crazy. Like between five and six. So then it means that every year. You need to release 10 songs. Wow. That's crazy. I also have heard it from Federico. Hmm. He also told me that it's better to like release songs like every six to eight weeks or something. Like, yeah. To keep up on track, basically. But it's, oh, God, it's so much work. And I don't know. You always have to have the the inspiration and somehow always something else comes in between, you know, like some performances, some other projects, and you're like kind of distracted. Yeah. But I've heard like some people like kind of isol isolate themselves, you know, for like two months and only record stuff and then come out like out of the shelter. <laughs> yeah, I like to do months. it as well sometimes. Mm. I think it's very good for me. This is a way that really works well. Do yeah. you do it sometimes? Just no. isolate yourself? No. And if you have something that you really need to focus on, yeah, how do you manage it? I just do it with my headphones in. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what, what do you think about going to a place where it's not a big city, maybe some village, mm. and then you don't have distractions at all, not even mm. to buy fancy stuff? That's interesting, but for me, it's it sounds it's it sounds impossible i don't know i'm so scared to live my yeah everyday life and like, i have like such a crazy fomo that i'm missing something you know what do you think you're missing or what do you fear i don't of know missing? i don't know it's just like a constant fun <laughs> or, i don't know it's crazy like keeping up with your friends 
keeping up with all of the concerts and events that are going on in Berlin. I mean, sometimes I'm just like, I would go out usually like every day of the week, like in the evening, you know, hmm. some concerts, to some events, whatever. And then now I really like trying to be more picky and not to burn out myself, you know, with the constant entertainment and constant so socializing is you're extroverted i would say i'm extroverted i don't know yeah i mean i, I enjoy being like out and like i think uh being the difference between being extrovert and introvert is where you get your energy from yeah you know whether you get it from other people or you get it with you with yourself when you're alone yeah true i feel like i'm getting more energy when i'm like working on my own stuff and getting inspired and then i go out and like socialize with people that's like my my way but so mm. when i'm when i'm out i feel like i'm overly talkative overly like, energized and sometimes mm. i need to like tone it down maybe <laughs> I don't know. so being alone for you it's more like releasing the energy and then when you need more energy you go with people and then you feel energized I don't know. I feel like I'm I'm kind of both. Sometimes I can like get energy also like, from just like being alone and like reading something and just also like working on my projects and getting inspired. In, inspired. Uh, but sometimes also from talking to some other people, it also gives me energy, I guess, and inspiration and seeing what people are doing in their life. It's also very inspiring, yeah. I guess, when you see, oh my God, it's that's possible. You You would never like come up with this on your own i don't know it's so crazy how much stuff people are doing yes especially here in berlin it's so mind-blowing to hear i don't know yeah this is crazy city i love this everyone yeah. is so creative here and you can find a niche to do anything that oh, you really yeah, want yeah i love it it's like i feel like berlin is like a puzzle you know you can just like build your own i don't really understand like because a lot of people who like move out of berlin they tell me ah Berlin is just like so much drugs and party and it's like so easy to do this thing and like getting like slipped down this road of drugs basically. This is true, yeah. But I don't I don't I cannot relate. I don't know. I don't I don't I don't believe in that. I think like Berlin really I don't I wasn't going party for for first four years that I've been in Berlin. I didn't go to any party. I was just like concentrating my music and concert as my friends and some Tempero fell gems and picnics and stuff, you know, like more chill and cozy kind of activities. And then only this year, like met some people who were like going to the parties and I joined them. But and it was a lot of fun. But it's not that I'm, I would be like, OK, that's only thing that I'm doing right now in my life. It's drugs and party, you know, but I feel like you have you have to have like other hobbies, I guess, or like other interests. Yeah, it's better to have more hobbies and interests. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. I wasn't exposed to this like party scene in the first years. But some people think, oh yeah, it's only this. But I feel like it depends on which environment you live or in which part of the city, maybe also. Yeah, and who is the circle of people around? Yeah, you? who are your friends? I mean, all of my mus all of my friends are mostly musicians or like artists who are, like not big party goers. You know, like the maybe eighty percent of my friends are like chill musicians and yeah, yeah. jam sessions yeah this for me it wins every party a jam session yeah <laughs> a good jam session is it's something this is spiritual yeah when there is good jam session yeah. and everyone are listening to everyone yeah and it's like meditation yes it's so beautiful but it's also nice. sometimes there are very bad jam sessions here <laughs> oh my god <laughs> especially in the rock scene and okay. not to put any fingers but usually you know when you have a lot of distortions okay and there is the attitude of rock and energy you know sometimes you you don't hear anyone because everyone wants to be heard ah, wow yeah i never never been to those uh yeah it was really interesting times yeah but yeah i really believe like maybe you have to be like strong and what you or like know yourself well enough to know what you want you know not being influenced by the whole party scene i guess I don't know, but I really believe, like, I mean, there are also, like, families in Berlin who, like, obviously oh, yeah. don't have, like, any relation to parties, you know? They have, like, their Charlottenburg or Prenzauerberg yeah. chill family life. Or there are also old people who, like, also do some 
other activities. So I think it's really varies on what kind of style you want to do or what are your interests. Yeah, there are so many shades to this city. Yeah, for you know, sure. So many colors and so many corners yeah. where you can meet incredible people. Yeah, definitely. You can do exactly, whatever you want. Yeah, we would exactly we have the same interests. Yeah, for any hobby, you have like meetup or like workshops or groups that are doing it. And I don't know, for any like philosophy direction, for any religious, there yeah. are so many, I don't know, communities and so many, I don't know, groups, so... Yeah, and this is why probably you feel this FOMO the whole time. There's yeah, so many maybe. events happening. True, yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but I enjoy it so much still. And I mean, comparison to Munich, like in Munich, you have to like kind of adapt to the tone of the city that the city is like dictating you, you know. But I feel like... Nothing is really going on the right in Munich. I mean, some parties, some like... There are some festivals also, like some cultural festivals in the city like summer festivals and stuff, which is nice. But like Oktoberfest, of course, <laughs> the highlight of the year. Which is not in October. No, it's in... <laughs> I, I think it's a few days in October, Yeah. but the majority is in September, yeah. But yeah, nothing in comparison to, to Berlin, of course. Yeah, maybe the only city that is close to the madness here is London. Okay, yeah, maybe. I've never I been, so. but... But it's also very Probably. different in London. Hmm. There is this uh, industrial vibe here in mm. Berlin. Mm -hmm. and there is something that is is poor in okay. Berlin. <laughs> like, uh, no money. Yeah. <laughs> it creates some charm, but I think it's also disappearing a little bit. Yeah. Poor but sexy, you know, the motto of Berlin. Yeah. <laughs> poor but sexy. Yeah, it's it's quite accurate. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think we can finish with this podcast. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, so things to do afterwards. Mm -hmm. It was a really good conversation. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Yes. And we put links to everything. So for your music mm -hmm. and for all the other stuff that we talked about, like the NFT project, mm -hmm. uh, not the NFT project, sorry, the, the OR. Mm -hmm. Do you have a link for it that yeah. we can share? Yeah, sure. Cool. And people can uh, register to a mailing list. Yeah, or... they can go for the like a waiting list. Yeah. When are you preparing to release the, the app? Um, I don't know, maybe like in a month because we're working for the special app for the Hacker House. It's going to be like another feature, but like not the main app, basically. So yeah, hopefully like end of September it's going to be shipped on the main net. Hell yes. Let's see. So maybe by the time I publish the episode, it will be ah, already yeah, oh, there. Nice, cool. Yeah, congratulations for this. Thank you. <laughs> very cool, very cool. And I hope this conversation triggered something that someone might go and now go for some crypto knowledge, some NFT, some blockchain to see how they can contribute with their own stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 like a virgin island or a virgin <laughs> mountain, you know, and people just discovering this place. Uh, this guy, Michael Seller, it says like it's buying a property in New York 400 years ago. Mm. This is blockchain right now. Wow. Yeah, I can agree. Yeah, I'm on for it. And I will finish this with, I think Bitcoin is the only money that is real <laughs> today. <laughs> yeah. How people can find you over the internet? How can people contact you for collaborations? Uh, just go look for Mimi Mitina. I have, I'm active on any platform of your choice. Yeah. Google her. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mimi. Thank you so much. Sweet touch, but you 
lips of mine, chubby some burnt cheeks Show me your impressive little peachy tricks Stay with me tonight, stay for a while Maybe this a while, we'll turn lifetime You can play some hide and seek, but please and disappear Life is so incredible, I don't know if it's real If it's real If it's real You're like the midnight sound machine Make me warm so bittersweet Moonlight dancing in the street You're like some flower August feel It's reminding me of home Never feel alone I don't want a truth, I don't need some merch I'm just laying here craving your sweet touch Mind, chubby sunburned cheeks Show me your impressive little bitchy tricks Stay with me tonight, stay for a while Maybe this a while, it's a lifetime We could play some hide and seek, but please don't disappear Life is so incredible, I don't know if it's real If it's real If it's real you 
Well 